All right, this video is reviewing 10-7 special segments in a circle. It should be a pretty quick video. It's a pretty easy lesson, so um, here we go. When you have a circle and you have two chords or two secants crossing each other, the portion of the line inside the circle, so here to here or here to here, um, when you multiply the two segments together, this one chord is split up into two segments by this intersecting line. So when we multiply these two together, we should get the same answer as when we multiply these two segments together, okay? So basically the rule is, let me back up a little, if two chords intersect in a circle, then the products of the lengths of the chord segments are equal. So here, A times B should be equal to C times D, that's it. That's the entire first part of this lesson, this first page. So we're gonna do a few examples here. I recorded this once and I didn't realize you couldn't see me over here on this side, so going back, rookie mistake. All right, so when I multiply three times six, that should be equal to two times x, these two segments. And I'm solving for x, so I get 18 equals two x divide both sides by two, and nine equals x. Okay, number two. Um, when I multiply two times 10, I should get the same answer as when I multiply x times x. So that's, oh, what did I get? Is it 10? Okay, so I should get um, 20 equals x squared, and then I'm gonna take the square root, and I'm gonna take the square root. And so we're gonna leave our answer as x equals 20, or we could simplify it to, what is it? Uh, four times five, two square root of five. That's supposed to be a two. Two square root of five. That would be an accurate answer. We could also change it to a decimal, but then we would be rounding. Oh, sorry. See, I don't realize you guys can't see it. We could also change this to a decimal, but then we would be rounding. And when you're talking about lengths and they're supposed to be equal, you don't want to round anything on one side if it's different from the other, right? So we want to keep it in the most accurate form, which is using the radical. All right, number three. There are a couple. I didn't highlight that one. The ones highlighted are the ones with funny answers. Okay, so eight times eight should be equal to six times x. So that's 64 equal to 6x. Divide both sides by 6. And we will get a decimal for our answer. So you'll either get 10.6 repeating, or if you wanted to keep it in fraction form when you divide and just simplify, it's the same thing as saying 10 and 2 thirds. 10 and, the two, 10 and 2 thirds doesn't require any rounding. If you put it in decimal form, it will. Okay, number four. Here x times x plus seven should be the same as six times three. And here is gonna be, and we're gonna end up having a quadratic equation, so you do need to remember how to factor to solve quadratics. So here we have x squared plus seven x equals 18. I need to get zero on this side to make this a trinomial x squared plus 7x minus 18 equals 0. Then I want to factor this guy, so I'm going to get two binomials. And the factors of negative 18 that add up to positive 7 are positive 9 and negative 2. So I'm going to have x plus 9 is one binomial and x minus 2 is another. And then remember the last step of solving a, a binomial when you're factoring or solving a factoring problem is to set each binomial equal to zero using the zero product property. When we multiply this term by this term, this whole parentheses by this guy, one of the two of them, if not both, have to be equal to zero. We don't know which one, so we're gonna solve for both. So we're either gonna get x plus nine equals zero, so x would have to equal negative nine, or x minus two equals zero, so x would have to equal positive two. Now the problem here is that x represents the length of a line. So if x was negative nine, can this chord be negative nine? No, lengths can't be negative. So this guy's out. So our answer here is x equals two. Okay, that was a funny one. Number five, um, here we have two diameters. They go directly through the middle of our circle. 
which means that each segment is a radius. And the radius of a circle stays the same all the way around. So all of these are the same. So 5 is the same size as x plus 2. x plus 2 is equal to 5. So minus 2 on both sides and x equals 3. Number 6, this is going to be another uh, radical sign problem. We've got um, a line here, the diameter of the circle, which is perpendicular to a chord. And remember, previously we said if these are perpendicular, then this line is cutting this chord in half. So this side is equal to this side, which means this is x. So 2 times 7 has to be equal to x times x. So x squared equals 14. Take the square root of both sides, and x equals the square root of 14. And the only thing I can do to simplify here is to change it to a decimal, which I don't want to do because I don't want to round anything. So I'm going to leave it in this form. Number seven, we're almost done. Um, another funky one, 2x times 3x is equal to 6 times 5. Okay, so we get 6x squared equals 30. Divide both sides by 6. x squared is equal to 5. Take the square root of both sides. x is equal to the square root of 5. And we don't want to round it, so we just leave it in radical form. And lastly, a normal one. 3x times x is equal to 8 times 6. So that's 3x squared is equal to 48. Divide both sides by 3. x squared equals uh, 1, 6. And 16 is a perfect square. So when we take the square root of both sides, I get x equals 4. Okay, so pretty easy lesson. When you have two lines inside a circle, one segment multiplied by its other segment is equal to the products of the segments on the other line, okay? Let me know if you have questions.